Now I did go a bit further with my original example, so I'm going to go back into it by double clicking on it and then clicking on the T here to get into the full VizTitle interface. You'll notice that as I come back into VizTitle, as I'm dragging through here, I'm getting my nice 3D camera move, but as soon as I let go, I go back to a flat image and everything changes. That's because coming out of VizTitle and going back in, this animation mode button has been turned off. Remember to click that back on, otherwise you won't see your 3D version. So now I want to blur up the background a bit. And I'm going to do that with a filter inside of VizTitle. So click on the background, go to the list of effects, and go down in this list here. I'm going to click on Stay because it's a, an effect that's a, sort of staying on screen, although it doesn't really matter. I could do the in or the out. I'm going to fiddle with it anyway. Go through the list of effects and look for the blurs. You can see I've got a whole variety of blurs here. I'm going to choose a Gaussian blur. I'm going to grab hold of this first one and just drag it and drop it onto the timeline. When you do that, you'll notice it goes in here at the end. And if I drag through along there, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I am getting a nice blurred background over the bit with a purple line on it. And it goes from blurred to sharp. That's because it's keyframed. This particular preset is keyframed to go from blurred to sharp. And I'm going to change all of that. Now, the first thing I need to do is to drag it out so it fits the entire shot because I want to be blurred all the way through. So having dragged it out to the entire length of the clip, now I've got to blur all the way through the clip, but it's still keyframe, so it starts off blurred and then it gets sharper. It's a little bit like changing the depth of field on a camera when you're filming, so it's going from blurred to sharp, as if you're changing the depth of field. And maybe you like that effect and maybe you don't. That's actually not what I'm after in this case. I want it to be blurred all the way through, so I'm going to adjust that. So the simplest thing to do to sort that out is to select the blur, come over to here where it says Gaussian Blur, and untick the stopwatches, so it's now no longer blurred at all. The blur is not keyframed at all. Of course, it's now gone completely sharp because there isn't any blur on it. So I've got to come over to the numbers over here, and I've got to add in a bit of blur because they went back to nothing at all. And I'm going to move it around till I've got something that I like. I quite like it when it's set to about 7, so I'm just setting 7 for both of them. And now I've got a nice blurred background. I'd also like to do the same thing with this twig at the front here. I'd like that to be slightly blurred so it looks like it's out of focus. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing with that. I'm going to select the blur here and then drop it onto the twig. Drag it out so it goes the entire length of the twig. Turn off the keyframing and put some numbers in so it's ever so slightly blurred. One thing I have noticed, particularly with this Gaussian blur, is that I have sometimes put it onto a clip and it's just not done what I want. I mean, you can see I've got a slightly funny looking edge here, but that's not the problem I've had. The problem I've had is that sometimes you put the Gaussian blur on and it just plain doesn't work. Now, I'm not getting any problems here, and one of the reasons for that is the only time I've actually had a problem is when I've used a very large image. I specifically resized these images to 1920 by 1080, which is the size of my video. If I used the original still pictures, which are something like 4,000 pixels across, and then loaded them up into VizTitle, that's when I've had occasions when the Gaussian blur just doesn't work. It's something that we have communicated to the people that make this title, and maybe they'll sort that out in a future version. But right now, if you use a very large image, you might find the Gaussian blur doesn't work. And I found it's only a problem with Gaussian blur. If I pick one of the others, like a motion blur here, throw that on there, dragging out the length of the clip, turn off the keyframing, and then blur it up a bit. And I've never had a problem with that. I've only ever had a problem with the Gaussian blur. My favourite blur is the Gaussian blur, like the motion blur here. Actually, in this case, the motion blur is doing a better job than the Gaussian blur. You notice the edges are slightly better. And in fact, in this case, I think motion blur is the better option. But, you know, just try them out. Try one of the others, see what you think. Let's grab hold of this radial blur and throw it on there. And look at that. And yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty atrocious. That's really horrible. That doesn't work at all. I think I'll get rid of that. I'll just undo it and go back to the motion blur, which actually looks quite nice. So there we are, now I've got the twig out of focus, the background slightly out of focus, and the two parrots in the middle are nice and sharp and in focus, and it's sort of simulating a depth of field. Now you don't have to do that, but sometimes it actually helps to sell the effect and make it look a little bit more realistic. But that's basically it. So come out of that, go back to Edius. Here is my 3D image move, and here's the original still image. 
So that's how you make a nice 3D image move. The bit that I did miss out was how did I make the basic images in the first place? How did I take this still image and cut all the different bits out and fill in all the holes that were left behind? And I missed that bit out entirely. I could have gone further. I only did four layers here. I did the twig, the two parrots in the background. I could have gone a bit further. I could have done this brown thing at the back. I could have done the fence and I could have done everything behind the fence as different layers. And I'd have six or seven layers and I just staggered them a bit more. And that would probably have done an even nicer looking effect. It just would have been a bit more effort. I thought in this case, four layers was enough. But okay, how did I do that? How did I take this still image and chop out all the bits that I needed? That, for example, is the background with the parrots cut out. So how did I do that? How did I go out of that and then fill in all those holes left behind the bits that I had cut out? Obviously, I use some kind of still image editing program. If you've got Photoshop, it's pretty easy. So let's quickly open up Photoshop and see how I did this inside of Photoshop. 